I'm coming at you with cancer vlog 4 and this is basically just gonna be about my surgery and my time in the hospital because I haven't filmed that yet and I didn't film it in the hospital so might as well do it now so on June 21st I went down to Mayo Clinic and I got surgery on my well basically my whole right side of my body because of my osteosarcoma and if you want to know more about my diagnosis and stuff Go ahead and watch my other cancer vlogs because I'll explain it more there. And I'm filming my entire cancer story so it, you can get all the details then. But basically I had a tumor in my right wrist so I got surgery to take it out. I went in on June 21st in the morning, like early, early morning. I had to wake up at 4.30 and I just got prepped and I went into the OR at 7.30. So at 7.30 I was just wheeled in, they put me on like a really skinny bed, it's not like one of the usual stretchers, and they strapped my legs in so I wouldn't move, and I decided that, well, actually since I would be going all the way under, I was getting an IV and everything, and they asked if I just wanted the IV or if I wanted laughing gas before so I like wouldn't feel it. And honestly, IVs don't bother me because I've gotten them so often. So I was just like, give me the IV. I don't even care. But then my mom's like, no, 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 no. Just give her the gas. Like, then she won't feel it, blah, blah, blah. Like, all this stuff, freaking out. I'm like, mom, chill. Just chill, okay? I've gotten so many IVs. It's really not that big of a deal. But, I mean, I'm kind of glad I did it just because it was kind of a funny experience. So they gave me the mask and they let me hold on to it and they're like, just like go whenever you're you're ready. Like, basically whenever you're just, just donezo, you're high out of your mind. So, I was sitting there and I was holding the mask and it just started with oxygen. And then they started putting in like medicine, whatever it is, I don't know. And I was sitting there, and I was like, oh, wow, this like really isn't doing anything. Like, I don't feel it. And then all of a sudden, I was just like, holy shit. <laughs> I literally felt like I was in an arcade game. It was so weird. There was, like, buzzing, and then just all of a sudden, I was like, huh. Like, my hand, it was like, it felt like a movie. Like, my hand just, like, fell limp off the mask, and I was just, like, done. My surgery was supposed to last about six hours. It's, like, an hour prep an hour to take out my fibula and then 
an hour to or four hours to reconstruct so that's six hours total but my surgery ended up being 12 hours yeah it was a long one um i feel so bad for my surgeons like that's disgusting i could not I couldn't do that for 12 hours. I can't do anything for 12 hours besides watch Netflix. Like, that's it. Basically, um, my entire surgery, I got my radius bone taken out from all the way up to my hand joint down to almost my elbow. So they took that entire bone out and sent it to pathology right away to start combing through with like a fine tooth comb to see if I had any high grade tumor. And then they took my fibula which is like the skinny bone in your leg and they just took the center part of it so I still have like two little like nubs right here which have the nerves and tendons and muscles so I still have a fully functioning leg so they took that bone and put that in the place of the radius and I have two metal plates on uh, by my hand and down here just to keep everything in place while it's healing and then if I can show this properly they took some bone from my hip so right there is like my hip i guess and they took some from there to pack it in my wrist joint i don't really know what the purpose of that was and i didn't even know about that part until the day before surgery so i had no idea that i would need to get a bone taken out of my hip really actually they might have mentioned it but like for some reason it never like clicked in my brain that i would have more than two incisions so they took some there, and then they also, I explained in another vlog that I needed a skin graft. So this is my donor site right here. Um, it's actually healing really nice. It's really pink, but like it's not raw anymore. Like I can touch it, have it uncovered, and everything like that. Uh, it looks kind of gross. There are some areas where it's like, scabbing I guess but yeah and I cannot show like the actual skin graft like site where they put the skin just because it's covered with uh zero form and stuff and I don't change that until the morning but I will put in like a little clip that my friends recorded because it's pretty gnarly it's so gross I can't look at it it I can't I can't so if you are like freaked out by all that jazz, then I suggest just skipping through that little part. So that's basically everything they had to do to me. And then I was shipped off into the ICU and I had my breathing tube in. And so like I had to get the thing shoved down my throat. I was asleep when they did that, thank God, because I would just, oh uh, no. Um, but I had the breathing tube and when I was waking up, it was weird because I couldn't see, like, everything was still black. But I could hear and I could, like, feel the tube in my, like, mouth, I guess. And I was, like, still waking up and I started, like, coughing. I was like, <coughs> because there's something weird in my throat. And I heard the nurses, they're like, no, it's okay. You might, like, this might feel weird, but it's coming out. And they, like, pulled it out and I literally just, like, gagged. I was like, <coughs> I didn't throw up. I just, like, started coughing because it hurt. Like, it felt so weird. And I did have a sore throat for a couple days. I was shipped off to the ICU and I ended up staying there for two days. And lucky me, I was put right next to the crying baby. Just my luck, right? Yeah, just my luck. So I was next to the crying baby. I had amazing nurses the whole time. They took such good care of me. Uh, doctors came in like 24-7. I was never alone, ever. I was on three medications I think I was on oxy Tylenol and morphine and then sometimes Valium so I was actually on four occasionally So that's what I was on for pain medication, but I was also on two blood thinners for some reason. I have no idea why, but I was. So I was on quite a bit of medication. Honestly, the first two days in the ICU, I don't remember a lot because 
I was really drugged up, to be honest. I was really drugged, <laughs> legally drugged. When I was first like brought out of the OR, I had two big wraps, one on my arm. I didn't have a normal cast. I had a big bandage wrap that was huge. It was like literally two times the size of this. And there was like a little like door cut out kind of right on like the inside of my wrist, you know, if I'm like this part, it's easier to show on this because this is black. But so yeah, I had like a cut out here and they would open it and they would use this line called a Doppler, which is kind of like the ultrasound without the picture. And they would listen to my arteries to make sure they're still flowing because they had to reconnect them and such. So yeah, they did that all the freaking time. They would come in morning, night, middle of the night. They didn't care. They, they just came in a lot, all the time. After those two days when I started feeling better, they moved me to a regular room on the ortho floor, I think. Yeah, they moved me to the ortho floor and it was just funny because it was full of pretty much old people. Because, you know, like old people fall and break their hip and need surgery. And there's just me just chilling. It was a rough, rough couple of days. So I spent four days, I think. It was a rough couple of days. I spent four days in just the ortho floor. The first two days, I, well actually the first three days that I was in the hospital, I could not pee. I didn't know how. Like, I, it just wouldn't work, so I, ended, I had to have a catheter for a really long time, which sucked. And then it just, ugh. I didn't even want to talk about it. It was horrible. I just, ugh. No. Just no. But finally, I was able to go to the bathroom by myself. Well, not by myself, my nurse would have to walk me because I didn't know how to properly walk anymore, so they would have to put like a belt around me and she would hold me up and I would crutch my way to the bathroom and that sucked. Like, I had my own bathroom, obviously. We didn't have public bathrooms. I started occupational therapy, I think on the fourth day, which is basically like moving my fingers and my arms so like my shoulder didn't freeze and honestly I need to do that more because my shoulder kind of hurts because I just don't use this arm anymore so yeah but basically for occupational therapy I would have to try to straighten my fingers as much as I could like this and I'm still trying to get better like cause, you know you can go like this I can't with I can't and then you would have to spread them out this I could not do. I've gotten so much better. Because, you know, I go like this. And then I would have to tuck my thumb under my fingers. And it was so hard. You don't understand. But I did it all the time because I'm so determined. And I just stretch out my hands a lot. And then on the last day, I started physical therapy, which was more for my leg. I learned how to go up and down the stairs with a crutch. I just walked around, learned what 25% of my weight is, because that's what I had to, like, put on my leg. I couldn't put any more, otherwise it would mess things up or whatever. On the last day that I was in the hospital, I got this fun thing. Got one of these big old boots. It doesn't really work here. Let me fix it a little. A lot of people wear these boots when they get, like, ankle sprains and other things so basically recovering from my surgery for my ankles basically recovering from that ankle sprain so I wore one of these I could not take it off for like I actually I just couldn't take it off at all well just on Monday I was allowed to take it off and put as much weight on my leg as I wanted to and that whole explanation will be coming up in my next vlog along with this cast and all of that jazz just don't worry about don't worry about this right now that's coming okay i had to wear a boot for a really long time it was so uncomfortable sleeping learning how to sleep with the boot and the big wrap and the skin graft and everything oh so hard i had to sleep on my back and i always sleep on my stomach always so super hard adjusting now i'm able to sleep on my stomach again thank god even though it's not the easiest thing i just started sleeping without my boot a couple days ago because i was sick of it it was not comfortable whatsoever and they brought me down to the cast room on my last day in the hospital they just took some x-rays of my wrist like arm area 
and my leg and I'll try to insert them somewhere but yes they took some x-rays and then they just cut off the wraps well actually they only cut off my leg wrap and then put on the boot and they left the big wrap on and yeah so I had to go home with a really big wrap I had to have a wheelchair because walking is super difficult for me and it's still kind of difficult but I'm learning a lot more like it's improved a lot so yeah they sent me home with lots of instructions lots of rules I guess my mom said she was really nervous to bring me home because it's like bringing home a new baby and I guess she was right we had to change a lot in the house which I might make a little